some people who are so opposed to divorce, I don't think they realize that staying in a relationship where people are abusive or neglectful is actually uh, has a very negative effect. It actually can ruin people's psyche and set them backwards in life. It can deplete them. It can wound them. It can traumatize them. I am a big believer now in that if a relationship is in any way painful or invalidating that, you know, of course, people have to talk to their partner and work it out if they can and have the partner be on board. But if you're with a partner who doesn't care about solving this, I think that being in a, I mean, my own experience is being in a relationship that's depleting actually um, set me back in a number of ways. In order for me to stay in that relationship, I take responsibility for staying in it, but I'm just saying this is what was my result for myself. And you can judge for yourself if, you know, what, how you have to cope. So I had to come up with coping mechanisms. Um, so ten for for ten years, I had no coping mechanisms. I was just, um, you know, trying to be okay with whatever was hap not happening. You know how I was, kind of invalidated or ignored, especially sexually. And then I started taking Vicodin for ten years. When I stopped taking the Vicodin, I made a serious attempt to uh, fix all the issues that were a problem and they couldn't be resolved. And I tried to stay. And in that, I damaged myself even more. So by the time I divorced my husband, I was so sexually depleted and emotionally depleted that I made some really bad choices. And now I look at the stuff I did when I first got divorced, and I'm just like shaking my head. I can't even believe that I hooked up with these young guys, you know, who blew me off and just crazy stuff because I finally felt free I was no longer trapped and I was so curious to experience my sexuality which had been which was denied to me in that relationship that I chose I chose to be in a relationship where my sexuality was denied and not allowed and so when I finally got out I was so needy I was so extremely needy of just having like a, an emotional sexual connection with a man that I made some really bad choices because inside I was so needy and I knew I was so needy. I was extremely needy by the time I left, internally needy. Um, I made some really bad choices. I, I'm going to put some of the stories in my, um, probably in the members area because I'm way too embarrassed to put them out for just everyone. I'm just so embarrassed about some of the choices that I made. Uh, maybe I'll tell you one, because I want people to see, like staying in a bad relationship can actually ruin people. Just like what we saw what happened with, um, um, well, I think a lot of women who leave abusive relationships just get into another abusive relationship. You have to do the inner work too. But for me, I mean, oh my God, I i don't even want to tell you guys the stories. Just realize that there were times I was willing to drive to a guy for a one night stand. That's all I'm going to say. I would never, I don't do one night stands. I don't do hookups. I don't drive to guys. I mean, and I still love sex. Don't get me wrong. I was so depleted. I mean, and, you know, and I grew up kind of being told, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to be married for so long. I'm a good person because I'm, I, I'm sticking it out. I'm, I'm, I'm staying in this. I'm a good person. And I didn't realize I was actually hurting myself. I was damaging myself. Now, you might say that I had flaws in the relationship too. And I asked him so often what I could do to be a better wife. Because he did have those resentments against me, but he never said. He didn't want to address anything. He didn't want to face anything. So I didn't even know. 
uh, of course, I'm not perfect. I had flaws. Um, but he wasn't the one who wanted to leave me. He was okay with whatever flaws there were or not addressing whatever un things were unaddressed. He was fine with that. They say women fall for most of the divorces. And I think it's because I think we're less willing to, maybe we're less willing to deal with um, unhappy relationships. Maybe we're more introspective. I really don't know. One more thing I want to say is that I was told recently that in California, all child custody is 50-50, even for infants, that there is no such thing as the mom gets custody, even for an infant. That should be mostly with the mom, that child custody is 50-50 in a breakup, even if the parents are not married. So all these guys going around saying, oh, women get everything in divorce court. I don't think so. I know a lot of struggling single moms that have 50-50 custody with a deadbeat dad. So I don't want to hear all this bullshit uh, from the manosphere. If you give me any bullshit, um, I'm just going to block you. If you have any stories about women who got rich in the divorce and stole all the guy's money and kept the kids, provide a link, provide a specific story. I'm just tired of all the bullshit. The main point I want to make in this video is that being in relationships with people who invalidate us, hurt us, abuse us, betray us, it doesn't make us a good person, you know, for being a martyr or for sticking it out and being loyal or whatever. It actually, uh, it's actually bad for our mental and emotional health. Like we are actually damaging ourselves. In my opinion, even for the sake of the kids, even for the sake of the kids, you know, damaging ourselves, the kids and divorced parents are just fine. The important thing is, the important thing is when people break up, it's very important that the parents maintain a cordial relationship and do not talk bad about the other parent. It's very important for the for children, I mean, yeah, ideally they have two parents that get along, but if they if the parents can't get along, they have to support the child's relationship with the other parent. There has to be love there. You have to figure out how to do that. And again, that's why I come back to be careful who we have kids with because there's no going back to having to deal with years long with some loser that we're bonded through because of our kids, you know. Um, that's all I want to say in this video. I'm so glad I got divorced. I am so free now. I am so free. And, you know, my sex life is my business. I have my sugar daddies. I will tell you this. I have such great sex with such hot guys. I shouldn't even tell you guys. Good looking men who are so passionate and affectionate with me in a way that the man I was married to never ever could be because he was incapable of it. I picked someone like that and now I, I'm picking better. Um, that's kind of a part of my life I don't really like to talk that much about because it's not anyone's business and there's a lot more detail that goes into it. But basically, um, um, basically, I do get sex. That's really good from guys that I that that are vetted, you know. Uh, one more thing I want to say. Sometimes on my Just for Fans, guys ask me questions. It's pretty rare on my YouTube channel. People might ask me questions. And I think that um, it's, I'm not going to answer questions to anonymous people. Like I make videos or create content for entertainment or because I want to. But answering a question is kind of a vulnerable thing that is only only people who I know who are actually in my physical sitting in front of me are deserve to ask me a question about my own personal life, in my opinion. Um, some questions I might answer, but most I won't. Even then, I might not answer all the questions, but I'm much more likely to answer questions like that and some of those people think that they can just ask whatever they want and surely they can but there's also this concept of boundaries I'm like I don't even know you I don't even know you like you're just some anonymous person asking me a question like no 
there's kind of the concept of intimacy and vulnerability like the more intimate we i am with someone the more vulnerable i'll be i will be with that person and that's kind of also part of boundaries you know uh like that guy at the gym the other day who was like what's your name i didn't even know him and he's asking me my name like he's taking asking a question is actually a taking and it's asking someone to be vulnerable especially I mean, it just feels invasive to me when people ask me questions like that. I don't know. I just really go by how I feel in my body and whether I want to interact with someone or not. I just think that people have to remember that when they're online and they're anonymous, they have to remember they know who they are, but I don't know who they are. So they have to be a little bit more respectful and they have to realize that, um, I do not know. Maybe a lot of women are just so easy these days. I am not easy. I have boundaries and I have preferences and I have standards and I'm proud of that. And that's why I want to make these videos to share that part of me because I want to encourage other people also to have boundaries and to have standards and to look for people who have boundaries and standards. Those are people that are a lot more reliable and authentic than someone who's boundaryless and just gives everything to just anyone um they don't have any discernment that way i value my standards and my boundaries but yeah just suffice it to say that when after i got divorced i was so depleted i was so emotionally and sexually depleted through years of neglect that i allowed myself to put in because i thought i was a good person for staying married for so long that i was a good person you know, and I wasn't. I was stupid. Frankly, I was stupid to be married 25 years. I was stupid, you know, and to me, that was such a badge of honor. <laughs> I was stupid. Those of you who got divorced after 10 years, you guys are the smart ones because at the 10 year mark, when I started taking the Vicodin, I should have just left him. You know, those of you who left after 10 years, you're the smart ones. You really are because you realized you were with someone that wasn't a good fit and you had the courage to go on your own. Um, but again, it's so important. And again, I had trouble with that too. I talked bad about my ex to my kids for a while. I was so angry with him, you know. I should have just left before I got so angry with him for just invalidating me for so long. I should have just left him before I got so angry. But anyway, it wasn't that bad, but I shouldn't have talked bad about him at all. And I see other parents who who seem to have a good relationship with their exes. The kids see the exes, you know, and and um uh that's that's important uh for the emotional well being of the children if you can do that. And you may not like what your ex does or how they parent or so many other aspects. You can't control it, you know. So unless they're being negligent, you have to report them to Child Protective Services or something. You just have to, you know, it's out of your control. It's hard. That part of life is hard. The easiest part of life is living alone. That, I tell you that. <laughs> There's no one I have to try to get along with. You know, my biggest challenge is figuring out what my YouTube topic is going to be. If I want, I'm kidding. All right. Sometimes I think, why am I talking about divorce? It's been so long. I guess because I'm still single. And the reason I'm single is because where would I meet someone I even want to go on a date with? You know, and I do prefer my men younger. But when I say I like younger men, guys will be in the comments. I'm younger. I'm 22 fat and have no job. Do you want me because I'm younger? No, I like, I like my younger men. I like the kind of men that a lot of women want. I don't like the kind of men that nobody wants. I like the kind of men that can easily get women. And not because they're players, but because they're relationship type of men. And women like them. 
because they they know how to have a conversation they're confident they have a job that they like you know they're happy with their lives they're fit um and they're good in bed uh those kind of guys um i'm just not attracted to men my age i think that a lot of men my age have let themselves go and it takes a lot of effort as we get older to keep our vitality and so on I think also that I bond more to people that are familiar to me. Like even seeing someone every day at work or at the gym, I think that there are aspects of feeling closer to people that come or interested in people that come from things that you do not see like on a dating app. And that's why I'm not on dating apps. Like familiarity, seeing someone over time in the same place. Okay, so they're somehow vetted. Um, their energy, their body movement, their posture tells me so much about someone. And I also like men who are vetted. Like if you're, if you're a Marine, you're, you were vetted by the Marine Corps. If you're a firefighter, you were vetted by the firefighting department. If you work for whatever company, they vetted you. I like my men vetted in some way vetted, vetted through being college educated or by working for a certain company or through their success, vetted, some familiarity, seeing them repeatedly over time. I like men who keep their word and who are intentional. None of that you can see in a dating app. So it's in a dating app, you can just get kind of curious about someone or maybe build a fantasy about someone and that's another mistake I made after my divorce I should I'm going to call this video mistakes I made um divorce retrospection because I stayed married too long which damaged me and it kept me from learning about people I got led astray I, I saw these guys online and I built a fantasy about them Oh, yeah, this is another divorced parent. We have so much in common. Oh, he, you know, he's also fit. He also has a good job. And I built a fantasy and that was just bullshit. I didn't know any of these people. You know, I didn't really listen. I didn't really slow down to wait to get to know people because I was so depleted. Um, I'm going to say staying married 25 years was a huge mistake and not used to be a point of pride for me and now i finally realized that it was a huge fucking mistake um but this is not to bring you down this is just to encourage you that if you didn't stay married that long you were smarter than i was and had more courage for sure